Good morning. I welcome you as we gather on this sixth Sunday of Epiphany. Welcome those who are worshiping with us for the first time, both here in the sanctuary and online. I thank Daniela Gutierrez for serving as our tech person this morning. Glad to have her back after her trip home to visit family and friends in Colombia. This month, we are going to be learning a new song, The Power of Your Love. There are printed copies for those who read music and like to learn that way. If you would like a copy and you don't have one, just raise your hand and the ushers will bring one to you as Horatio plays it through. Thank you, Horatio, and he will play it through as a full introduction when we sing it. It will be the second hymn this morning. I'd like to call upon our Minister of Discipleship, Gail McLaughlin, who has an announcement this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our Bible Quest and Bible Sunday are scheduled the end of March for our third graders and older to learn how to use the Bible and then get their very own Bible. So please save the date for March 27th for Bible Sunday. And then if you have a third grader or older who does not yet have a Bible, the RSVP date is the end of this month, February 28th, so that we can make sure the Bibles are all personalized and ready for them. If you did not receive an invitation, please let me know, and I will make sure that you get all of the information. Thank you. Thank you. Always look forward to Bible Quest. We do a Bible scavenger hunt. And as I get older, I'm noticing it's harder for me to keep up with the kids as they run from one place to another to get their next clue. I'd like to call on uh, Don Putney, who also has an announcement this morning. Good morning. Good morning. An announcement for those of you here and those of you at home. We have a meeting next week at 1115 of what is now called the InReach Ministry. The reason I'm announcing it and inviting anyone who would like to, to come is we've got some wonderfully exciting ways to overcome this COVID coming up. They are exciting. We'd love to have you involved. It's about time we got out and did some things together. And we invite you to the meeting at 1115 next week. Thank you, Don. And... I have faith that this is the last surge and the last hurrah for this pandemic and that we're going to be returning to a more normal way of life. God, don't make me a liar. <laughs> also would like to announce that the confirmation class this year will be holding its first class on March 10th. This is for eighth graders or those who are 13 years of age and older. We meet every Thursday evening to prepare for our young adults to join the church, and that will be on Pentecost Sunday, which I believe this year is on the first Sunday of June, and it's going to be a big celebration. We actually We'll have three classes that will be joining because of the pandemic. We did not hold the confirmation the previous two years. Are there any other announcements? 
If there are none, then let us draw near to God that we might be blessed with the love that is from everlasting to everlasting. Let your light shine, shine, shine For Jesus all the time, time, time Walk in the light, beautiful light Of his love Let your voices praise, praise, praise Let your love for Jesus raise Walk in the light, beautiful light Walk in the light Heavenly light, walk in the light, beautiful light of His love. Walk in the light of His love. Please join me in the call to worship. Come in, come in, come in and sit down, for you are a part of the family. So share in the laughter and cry in the pain, for you are a part of the family. There's a rest for the weary and a joy for us all. There's a yoke that is easy and a burden that's small. So come in one and all and answer the call, for you are a part of the family. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. God of abundant blessings and a life that is truly abundant, draw near to us and receive the joyful praise of your sons and daughters. Here in the peace of your sanctuary, we raise our voices to the heavens to give you thanks for the blessings that come to us each and every day with the rising of the sun. In this time of joyful singing and sacred stillness, lay your hand upon our hearts that we may be inspired to say a resounding yes to your goodness and grace by showing generosity to those in need. 
understanding to those in despair, respect to those who disagree with us, forgiveness to those who trespass against us, and compassion to those who suffer. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world and who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. We have come this day to give thanks and to praise God with our songs of joy. We also give thanks to God through all our deeds of loving kindness. So let us come now to, actually, I just realized something. This is not what we're supposed to be doing, is it? No. My apologies. Remember what I just said for a little later in the service. At this time, I would like to call upon our church office aide of moderator, Karen Weberg, our vice moderator, Don Putney, and our senior deacon, Alicia McGoldrick, for the installation of our council members. Thank you, Rick. The following members have been elected to serve on council. As your names are read, I invite you to come forward. Elected to three-year terms are the following. Heidi Hastings. Owen McDonald. Warren Pierce. And Ed Tisdale. Also elected to complete the final two years of an expired term is Dick Jeswaldo. You have been elected by your fellow members to serve in the church council. As moderator, I ask you to make the following promises. Do you accept the faith and covenant, the purpose and polity of the Union Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, in North Reading as stated in the bylaws? If so, please say, I do. I do. Do you promise to honor your calling as a deacon and a trustee and to work with the pastor of this congregation, speaking in truth and love to him that we may all serve Christ and his church to the best of your abilities? If so, please say, I do. I have a cross for you to remind you of your office of deacon in our church. You are a bearer of the cross of Christ with and for us who have elected you. I invite you to carry it with you and may it remind you to give your very best in your ministry as a deacon of our church.
I have a dove for you, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. In John's Gospel, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the Counselor. In wearing your pin, may it remind you as a trustee to always be open to the wisdom that the Holy Spirit has to offer in the decisions you make. Will the members of the North Reading Union Congregational Church please stand and pledge your support to work with our newly installed council members? We, we the members of this church, having elected these people to serve on the council in accordance with the bylaws, promise to encourage, to support, and to work with them, along with all the council members and the pastor in furthering the life and ministries of this congregation so that we may all move in a more Christ-like direction. Congratulations. I invite the congregation to please be seated. Let us pray. God of this day and all the days that are yet to come, you have called these faithful disciples to serve you in this household of faith and the wider world, which you have entrusted to our care and keeping. Send your Holy Spirit upon them that they may serve among us with faithfulness and honor. Help them to be diligent in their duties, that this body of Christ may prosper in the mission that you place before us. May their example prove worthy of us to follow as we are united in Christ's ministry to the glory of your name. Amen. And I offer you my heartfelt thanks and congratulations. I look forward to working with you in the months to come. Let us continue now to worship and praise God as we come uh, to God's altar with our tithes and our offerings. join me in the prayer of dedication. We come, we come to, to your, your altar, altar, Lord, with an offering of gratitude for your love that came to dwell among us, full of grace and truth. May the gifts that we dedicate now with humble hearts allow the light of Christ to shine more brightly for all to see. This we ask as we continue to follow the one in whom you were well pleased. Amen.
So very special good morning to the children and young at heart. I'm wondering if you've ever had a bad day or maybe a few bad days. Maybe you got hurt and you have to wear a cast or get stitches or maybe you're just sick and not feeling well. That can really ruin your day or a few of them. Maybe you work really hard on your homework and it just takes so long that you can't do anything else because there's just no time. I don't know about you, but this is one of the worst. Have you ever stepped on a Lego? <laughs> that can really ruin your day. Last week, we had a snow day on Friday, but it was kind of a disappointing snow day because it was gross and icy and you couldn't go on outside. And it kind of just made summer shorter. That wasn't so fun. Maybe you want to do something with friends, but because of COVID, you can't do things the way we used to. Or maybe you're just really tired of wearing that mask. But in today's Bible story, Jesus tells the people that even when things are hard or when you're not feeling good about things, that God is still with you and there is joy ahead. There are things to look forward to. He actually tells them to leap for joy. And so when you are sick or hurt, I promise that your families and doctors are trying as hard as they can to make you better. And at some point, you will feel better. When you step on that Lego, I bet you're going to pick it up so tomorrow you won't step on it. And maybe you'll look a little more carefully where you step. There's more snow, as we can see outside. Last week's snowstorm was kind of a bummer, but this one is much more beautiful and hopefully better to build a snowman in. And if you listen to what Reverend Hughes said during the announcements, maybe, just maybe, this COVID thing isn't going to be so bad for too much longer. So Jesus wants us to remember that even when things are hard, there is hope ahead and God is with us. So I invite you at some point today, at home, you can do it now, or in the sanctuary, whether children or young at heart, to either sing for joy or leap for joy on your way out of the service today. But I challenge you to find some time, even if things are hard, even if you don't really like snow, or if you're like me and you're ready for warmer weather, there are still things to be hopeful for. God is still with us, and we can sing and leap for joy. Let us pray. Oh, Holy One, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for all the different kinds of weather, for our families who love us and take care of us. We thank you especially for your son, for teaching us about you and about how to find joy in life. Please continue to surround us and guide us as we find joy even during the difficult times. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.
seated. I invite you to join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Good people, let us enter into this time of sacred stillness that we might be with our Lord. My sisters, my brothers, are there prayers that you would like to lift up this morning? Yes, Andy. Yes, so I did go over to see Bob in the hospital over in Winchester. He has now been transferred to Avidnia Care in Wilmington. Uh, they did some tests. They, he was having difficulty breathing. They discovered that they ha he has an ulcer on his esophagus. So we lift up Bob and his wife Jean in prayer and ask that God give them strength. Lord, in your goodness. Yes, Tom. Of, as the world kind of waits, we pray for the people of the Ukraine yeah. and hope that peace may come to that area of the world, which it seems to be now on the poison, almost on the brink of war. Yes. What is going on in Ukraine right now is something that gives many of us a heavy heart, and we do pray that diplomacy will prevail and that there won't be armed conflict there. Lord, in your goodness, I lift up in prayer Mary Ellen Dahlgren, friend of Charlene Malik. She has a recurrence of her cancer and is undergoing treatment. We ask that God's spirit be with her. Lord, in your goodness. Also, we lift up in prayer Nadine Belial, our church administrator's aunt, Paula Velardo, she passed away this past week. We ask that God be with her family as they prepare to say their sacred goodbyes. Lord, in your goodness. We also celebrate with Jen Hui and Austin Yu. They are engaged to be married and that will be taking place on August 7th. Uh, Jen grew up in our congregation and I am honored to be celebrating the wedding with them. We ask that God's blessing be upon Jen and Austin. Lord, in your goodness. Amen. We also lift up in prayer Sandy Hayes' son, uh, Billy, as he continues his treatments, and also Kelly Piacopoulos, a daughter of Kevin and Linda Welsh. Lord, in your goodness. Amen. Nancy Ferretti wants to lift up the dedicated members of our church family who serve on council. So we give, give thanks for each of them and for their graciousness and agreeing to serve with their time and their talents and share those with us. So thank you for that. Lord, in your goodness. We also pray for Pastor Rick's longtime friend, Paul Colinero, who has been living with atypical Parkinson's and is now receiving hospice care. We ask for strength and comfort for Paul and lift up his family and loved ones as they navigate this difficult time. Lord, in your goodness. Amen. And I thank you, Gail, for making that last prayer request. I know I couldn't do it myself, a friend of 50 years, and uh, you all know him very well. 
He's the person who taught me how to make the lobster bisque. <laughs> Let us pray. God of this day and all the days the yet to be, we praise you for you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. And you are with us now. You are with us as we walk the path of life. No matter where it leads us, you are already there. And when we choose a path that is not good for us or others, we give you thanks that you continue to reach out and to call us back to your paths of righteousness. Holy One, you have heard the prayers that we have lifted up to you this day, both those that we have spoken and to those that are stirring in our hearts. We ask your blessing upon this community of faith, that the light that we know, that we embrace, that we celebrate, may shine brightly into the community around us, into the wider world. For we know that you have called us to follow the one who is your only begotten son, and we do so with our whole hearts and our whole beings. For truly we know that all the truth, all the love, all the grace that he has to offer is so needed in our troubled world. So we ask that you strengthen us with the courage and the grace that we need for the living of these days. And we pray it in the mighty name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning's reading may sound familiar, but also a little different from the Sermon on the Mount, which you will find in Matthew's Gospel. In Luke's Gospel, it is called the Sermon on the Plain, and we read these words from the sixth chapter, beginning with the 17th verse. And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, 
for so their fathers did to the false prophets. Here ends the reading of the word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the sacred scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and always our redeemer. Amen. That skirt is too short. That boy's hair is too long. That meal was terrible. The sermon this morning was boring. It's called criticism. And if you're like most people, you don't like it when you're on the receiving end of a little criticism. When that happens, the temptation is always there to react the way St. Peter did when a very impatient woman died and went to heaven. When she got there, she wasn't thrilled to see that there was a long line of people waiting to get into heaven. After standing in the line for over an hour, the woman finally got to the point where there were just two other women in the line in front of her. When the first woman stepped forward, St. Peter thanked her for her patience. That's okay, she said. I've wanted to meet Jesus all my life, so I didn't mind the wait. I appreciate that, St. Peter said with a smile. Now, before I let you into heaven, I have to ask you a question. How do you spell God? Oh, that's easy, the woman said. G-O-D, God. That's correct, St. Peter said. And the pearly gate swung open wide to let the woman into heaven. When the second woman stepped forward, St. Peter also thanked her for her patience. That's okay, she said. Since I'm going to be here for eternity, I didn't mind the wait. I appreciate that, St. Peter said. Now, before I let you into heaven, I also have to ask you a question. How do you spell Jesus? Oh, that's easy, the woman said. J-E-S-U-S, Jesus. That's correct, St. Peter said. And the pearly gates swung open wide to let the woman into heaven. Now it was the third woman's turn. When she stepped forward, St. Peter thanked her as well for her patience. I hope it wasn't too much of a bother, he said. It certainly was a bother, the woman said indignantly. All my life I've had to stand in line. I had to do it when I was in school. Then later in life, I had to do it when I went to the bank, the post office, the grocery store. And I certainly don't expect to stand in line when it comes to getting into heaven of all places. I understand, St. Peter said as he nodded his head. Now, before I let you into heaven, I also have to ask you a question. How do you spell Czechoslovakia? <laughs> Nobody likes to be criticized. You don't like to be criticized, do you? I know I don't. And that's why it might be hard to hear and receive the message that's waiting for us this morning in the Sermon on the Plain. In this morning's reading, we're told that Jesus gathered his followers together. And then after a series of blessings, he said to them, Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Jesus then went on to emphasize the point by saying, Woe to you who are full now and basically don't have to worry about having food on the table because you're rich. Woe to you who are laughing now and full of joy because you're rich and you have everything that you want. Woe to you when people speak well of you and when people compliment you and admire you and praise you because you're rich. Jesus doesn't pull any punches 
in the Sermon on the Plain. And we need to be honest with ourselves here. Compared to most people in the world, you and I are rich. We may not be billionaire rich like Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon, but compared to most of the people in the world, we're rich. So in the Sermon on the Plain, Jesus is talking to us. And even though it makes me cringe a little, that woe is for me. It's for you. It's for us. Before we go any further, though, it needs to be made very clear that Jesus didn't dislike people who were rich. After all, Jesus called Matthew to be one of his disciples. Do you remember what Matthew did for a living? He was a rich tax collector. But that didn't stop Jesus from calling him to be one of his disciples. We also know that after Jesus was crucified, they took his lifeless body down from that cross and they laid it in a tomb that belonged to a rich man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea. We also know that as Jesus passed through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem, he decided to spend the afternoon with a rich man by the name of Zacchaeus. Luke tells us that as the people in the crowd were cheering Jesus on, he looked up into a sycamore tree and he said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. Now, the reason why Jesus decided to spend the afternoon with Zacchaeus wasn't because he was rich and Jesus wanted to make sure that he got a decent meal that day. The reason Jesus decided to stay with Zacchaeus, to spend the afternoon with him, is because he was rich and Jesus wanted to help him. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. As soon as Zacchaeus came down out of that sycamore tree, he ran to Jesus and he said, Lord, half of all my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. Jesus then said, today, salvation has come to this house. That's the Jesus who is waiting for you in the sermon on the plain. There is a critical Jesus waiting for us in the Sermon on the Plain. But the one thing you can be absolutely sure of is that when Jesus has a word of criticism for you or for me or for anyone, it will never be like the harsh words that a teenager heard one morning when she walked into the family kitchen and she asked, has anyone seen my sweater? As soon as she said that, her father groaned, you mean the one that costs $80? Her sister groused, you mean the one that you won't let me wear? Her brother giggled, you mean the ugly one that makes you look fat? Her grandmother griped, you mean the one with a really low neckline? And her mother groaned, you mean the one that I have to wash by hand in cold water? That's the kind of criticism that you hear and see everywhere these days. We see it all the way from the halls of Congress uh, to Main Street, to places where we work, to places where we go to school, to places where we go to just relax. The criticism is full of nastiness and negativity. And Jesus has no use for that kind of criticism. The goal of his criticism is always to help and to heal. The goal of his criticism is, is always to show you how to be the person God created you to be so your days can be filled with the love and the joy and the peace that truly make life worth living. Many years ago, I came face to face with the critical Jesus when I was in seminary. 
It happened in a class where each of the students had to present a case study. The case study had to deal with something that we were experiencing in the churches where we were doing our field education, where we were serving as student ministers. When it was my turn, I presented a case study about a woman who was making my life miserable. She was always bad-mouthing me, and she never missed an opportunity to point out my faults and my flaws. So my case study was about my relationship with this difficult woman. When I finished presenting the case study, my fellow students showered me with sympathy. They reassured me that I was right and that woman was wrong. They warned me that the woman was a clergy killer and that I needed to protect myself from her nastiness. While all of that was going on, the professor just sat there. Then when everybody had their opportunity to speak, the professor looked at me and said, that woman knows you're pretty good, doesn't she? <laughs> Ouch. It's not what I wanted to hear, but it's what I needed to hear. Because as a person of faith, I want to be on a journey where I'm becoming more and more like Jesus. And so I need to look at the things that aren't good and right about me. In fact, I tell people that, oh, lo, these many years, I've been doing that alphabetically, looking at my faults and flaws, A, B, C, and so on. People will then ask me, what letter are you on? And I tell them, A. The critical Jesus will tell you not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Robert Schuller saw that many years ago. As many of you probably remember, Robert Schuller was the senior pastor of the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California. I've been there. It's an amazing place. He was also famous around the world. Every Sunday morning, millions of people saw him on his television show, The Hour of Power. Reverend Shuler was also a well-published author, and he had an encounter with the critical Jesus on one of the book tours that he did for a book he had written. It was a grueling tour that took him to eight different cities in four days. It was exhausting, and this was all on top of his day-to-day -day responsibilities as the spiritual leader of the Crystal Cathedral. One morning during the tour, Reverend Shula sat down with his personal secretary to go over his upcoming schedule. She reminded him that when they got back to California, he was scheduled to have lunch with the winner of a charity raffle. The winner of the charity raffle paid $500 to have lunch with the famous preacher, teacher, and author. Well, the good reverend was uh, pleased to know that his presence was in such high demand, and he was feeling pretty good about himself until he learned that the person who paid $500 to have his undivided attention was his daughter. Ouch. That undoubtedly wasn't what Reverend Shula wanted to hear, but it's what he needed to hear. Good people, we come every Sunday to be with Jesus Christ, who has been changing lives for the better these past 2,000 years. We just need to remember that sometimes he does that with a little love, and sometimes he does it with a little shove. Amen.
People of God, our service of worship has ended. Let us prepare now to go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit be upon you all. Amen. Shalom to you now, shalom, my friends. May God's full mercy bless you, my friends.